Technology, Indore. He has been postdoctoral research fellow at Nanyang Technical University, Singapore. He received a PhD degree in computer science from Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi, India. He received an MPhil degree in mathematics from Aligarh Muslim University, Aligarh. His research interests include sport vector machines, optimization, machine learning, deep learning, application to Alzheimer's disease and dementia, biomedical signal processing, and fixed point theory and application. He has published over 40 referred journal papers of international repute. He is the recipient of 2017 SERP Early Career Research Award in Engineering Sciences and only recipient of the 2016 DST Ramanujan Fellowship in Mathematical Science, which are the prestigious award of India at early career level. He is currently the member of editorial board, guest editor in several journals including ACM Projection of Multimedia, uh, Applied Soft Computing, Elsevier, Applied Intelligence, Springer, Multimedia Tools and Applications, Springer, and Smart Science, Taylor and Francis. He has also co-edited one book in Springer on Machine Intelligence and Signal Analysis. He has organized many international national conferences, symposium, workshop as general chair, organizing chair, coordinator, and deliver talk as keynote, plenary, invited speakers in many international conferences and symposium. He is the co-chair of the special session proposal in 2018, IEEE SSCI, and organized several special sessions in two print conferences, including WCCI, IJCNN, IEEE SMC, IEEE SSCI. Dr. M. Tanvir is currently the principal investigator or co-PI of seven major research projects funded by Government of India, including Department of Science and Technology, DST, Science and Engineering Research Board, SCRB, and Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, CSIR, and MHRD SPAR. So now I request Dr. M. Tanvir to present here. So, Yeah, hello, uh, Dr. Tripti. Uh, thank you so much uh, for the nice uh, introduction. A uh, very good afternoon to everyone. So let me share my slides. So could you please check uh, whether it is visible or not? Sir, it is visible. Oh, great. Hmm. So first of all, I would like to thank uh, organizers, especially uh, Dr. Tripti Goyal for uh, inviting me uh, to deliver a talk uh, in this one week webinar on machine intelligence in uh, biomedical data and informatics. So this is the last talk as uh, Dr. Tripti mentioned. Uh, and uh, after this talk, uh, 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 validity session will start. So a uh, title of my talk is on large scale least square tune support back to machines. So essentially, uh, I'm going to discuss few uh, new variants of tune support vector machines, uh, which is uh, useful for robustness, sparsity, and large scale data analysis. So this is the overall uh, background uh, of my uh, talk today. So outline of uh, this talk, uh, first I'll uh, give the overview uh, of uh, support vector machines. Uh, initially, I'll discuss geometrical interpretation, and then we'll uh, continue for mathematical uh, uh, foundation. And then we'll discuss uh, team support vector machine, which is more advanced version and computationally efficient model of support vector machines. And then several variants tune bounded support vector machines, least square tune support vector machines. And it's a robust energy based uh, least square tune support vector machines. And uh, this is the title of the talk, Large Scale Least Square Steam Support Vector Machines. 
and we'll discuss one more robust algorithm called the pinball loss uh, in support vaccinations and some uh, ongoing research activities uh, in our research lab at iit indore so support vector machines being computationally efficient uh, tool or technique for uh, supervised learning widely used for uh, classification problems initially it developed uh, for classification and then uh, developed for regression problems by mangasarian uh, uh, is initially for wapnik this uh, wapnik and then several uh, scientists including mangasarian Uh, has given a lot of contribution in this direction and it has been applied in several directions now it is uh, almost uh, all people including electrical mechanical computer scientists mathematicians bioinformatics all people are working in different directions uh, as a uh, few mentioned here particle swarm uh, Uh, optimization particle identification pattern recognition bioinformatics and uh, uh, biomedical in the sense that uh, diagnosis uh, disease diagnosis like alzheimer epilepsy uh, and all so the basic idea of support vector machine is to find a decision hyperplane optimal hyperplane uh, between positive and negative samples so first uh, as i mentioned that i'll give uh, just a uh, geometrical overview so uh, if you see with this uh, example uh, i have two different class two different dots so let me just assume that class 1 and class minus 1 different dots so now the basic idea is to find out a optimal hyperplane means optimal line here we are considering in r2 so we need to classify a data point of class 1 and minus 1 with one line so now we you can see that here we draw a line and we can classify these two data points of different class uh, if you see another uh, uh, this picture so we also have another line which can also classify uh, the same data i can see that another line and several lines we can find out which uh, can efficiently uh, classify this kind of data here we are considering linear data so now the idea is uh, which line is perfect which line is best to classify such kind of linear data so now uh, yeah sometimes it happens that when we draw a line some data points may lie on our other side so we can uh, call it as a misclassified or we can say error points so we can uh, give the penalty to such data points so we'll discuss later so uh, the first property is coming up is maximizing the margin so what is margin so margin is nothing but it's a width Uh, which is nothing but distance between positive and negative samples so <clears throat> and we can see that uh, and uh, this maximizing the margin in the sense that data point should be far from both the sides suppose if we are considering this uh, from one class 1 so it should be far from class minus 1 so we have to maximize this distance so in general you can see that uh, when we are talking about best separation it means that uh, larger distance should be there so the same concept is uh, here that uh, we are maximizing this distance so we have the best separation so if we have the best separation this is the idea of uh, spm to have the best uh, classification so here uh, the the name the support vector machine is coming from the word support vectors so support vectors are those vectors which lie on the boundary this uh, supporting hyperplanes we can say so supporting hyperplanes uh, uh, support vectors are those vectors uh, uh, which uh, support to decide the middle uh, that is optimal hyperplane it means that after this uh, we can ignore uh, other training samples so and that's why uh, it is uh, support vectors are important so because of this uh, the name is coming support vector machines 
So now let's see uh, how we are seeing this uh, maximizing the margin mathematically. Suppose see if I have one class w dot x plus b equal to one. So this is a simple uh, definition of hyperplane. So if we have a data point of class plus one, so it means that the data point should lie w uh, either on the line or above of w dot x plus b equal to one. Exactly the same manner, the data point should lie less than or equal to on the line uh, of w dot x plus b equal to minus one. So we are um, we had to calculate the margin. Margin is nothing but the distance between this. So distance we can see that this is two upon norm of w with the simple formula. So we had to maximize this margin. Uh, so to maximize this margin two upon norm of W, it means that we had to minimize W, right? So it means that we can say that uh, we equivalently we can say minimize uh, norm of W by two, or we can also say that minimize uh, norm of W square by two equivalently. So uh, the same thing we have written: we are minimizing this uh, W. Okay, maximizing w, uh, two upon norm of W means uh, equivalently we can say minimize uh, W transpose W upon two, right? And uh, in case there are misclassification during this uh, separation, so we can sum up those uh, misclassified points with uh, xi, xi one, xi two, and so on. We sum up and uh, we. Uh, put a parameter C which control the overfitting and then we minimize. So we have to minimize the error also. <clears throat> and subject to conditions that data point should above class one and below minus one to have the best separation. Right? This is the overall uh, objective of support factor machine. So this is exactly the same thing we have written. We are minimizing this first one. Uh, one upon w w uh, one upon two w transpose w uh, subject to the constraint here constraint are exactly same what i have written y i w transpose x i plus b greater than or equal to one here y i equal to plus one or minus one when uh, we are considering plus one so it means that it is w transpose x plus b greater than or equal to one when we are considering y i equal to minus one, it means that it is w transpose x plus b less than or equal to minus one. So this is exactly the same uh, what I'm talking about. So when we have some uh, uh, misclassification, so we just add a new formulation. We incorporate this uh, slack variable and we put this parameter c uh, subject to the constraints. So uh, now we, what we observe, uh, we'll discuss uh, more on detail uh, in the upcoming slides. That uh, when we are calculating this dual, so what happens uh, in the dual formulation? This x y transpose x j is coming up. It means that data samples are appearing in the form of inner product. So inner product is nothing but the real value function. So it means that. Uh, 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 this is for linear case. So now uh, it will help us when we are talking about the nonlinear case, high dimensional space. Uh, like this. So uh, suppose uh, if I take the first example. So uh, red points and blue uh, points. Suppose I want to draw a line here. So you can see that we can draw this green line and we can easily draw because this is uh, purely linearly separable data. So there is no issue. It works very well. But if I go for the second example, second picture, so we have red ball, uh, red points, blue point, red points. So we, can, we cannot draw a line which can classify this kind of data in R. In real line, we cannot draw a line that separate blue dots and red dots so but if we go from our uh, real line to r2 is plane line to plane then we can see here it means that we are mapping from x to x square means r to r square means uh, line to plane 
So what we observe that this blue data points and red data points will move up. And then we can see that we can draw a line so that separate these two classes, red and blue. So this is a, 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 one of the simplest example of uh, classification. But uh, what happens if we have a very complex data? Suppose if uh, we have this uh, kind of uh, complex data, red and blue. So if I go in R2, then uh, we even cannot draw a line. Now it looks very difficult. So what happens in general for the nonlinear case when data is highly complex? So we map this data uh, in some high dimensional space with some map, suppose phi. So we are mapping phi from suppose Rn. Suppose if I considering the left side uh, data of Rn, right? And the right side is Rn. So here, right side, this is high dimensional. So M is strictly greater than N. So it means that we are mapping uh, this input data in some high dimensional space such that data is linearly separable in some dimension. So we can see that in some dimension, uh, this blue and red uh, data points are separable. So, uh, the importance of such kind of uh, working style in SVM is uh, that uh, if uh, you uh, you can recall that uh, when I mentioned that in the dual formulation, the data point appearing in the form of inner product, that is x psi transpose x, right? So what happens in the case of nonlinear case, uh, uh, the data in the dual formulation data points appears in the form of phi transpose phi, right? So phi transpose phi is nothing but is again inner product. So it means that whatever be the dimension, it will not matter because uh, here we are uh, we are uh, we are working in the high dimensional space, but in R, right? Phi transpose phi is nothing but the real number. So uh, now, if you see that phi transpose phi here, we are mentioning this k. Here in SVM, we are represent simply k. And there are many k kernel functions available in the literature that we usually use uh, during the uh, numerical experiments. So I'll give a few examples. So if you see uh, here uh, two dimensional vectors x and k uh, equal to 1 plus x psi transpose x fully squared. So we need to show that k is equal to phi transpose phi. So this is a very simple calculation we can uh, represent uh, this k in the form of phi transpose phi. So in the same manner we can do for other examples. So there are some uh, known uh, kernel functions. There are many other kernel functions available in the literature that people are using. So usually uh, I see uh, people are working in SVM uh, prefer Gaussian kernel due to its nature. Radial basis uh, follow the uh, normal distribution <clears throat> so if you see here this nonlinear svm mathematically we are writing this dual formulation and data points is appearing this phi transpose phi here this k k here k means phi transpose phi as uh, already mentioned here this phi transpose phi equal to k so exactly same thing here we are writing this uh, uh, k uh, so it means that data points appear in the form of inner product when we are talking about nonlinear case. So, so no, uh, what we observe as a general overview of nonlinear support vector machines is the support vector machine locates a separating hyperplane in the feature space and classify points in that space. It doesn't need to represent the space explicitly, as I mentioned about phi. So we don't need to represent this uh, space as Rn, Rm, or what is n, what is n. No need, because uh, it is simply defined by the kernel function, that is phi transpose phi. And here kernel function plays the role of the dot product in the feature space. So it is the beauty uh, of support vector machine, and uh, I can say this is the so second important property of support vector machines. First, we discuss maximizing the margin, and this is second one, uh, kernel technique. 
so now uh, i would uh, uh, discuss uh, the more uh, detailed uh, uh, discussion of support vector machines and then uh, i'll go to another advanced algorithm of support vector machines so uh, let us consider the training set t x1 y1 x2 y2 and so on xl yl where xi are inputs and yi are corresponding outputs so here we are considering two class data so here uh, outputs in the form of either class belonging to class 1 or class minus 1 so uh, essentially uh, this support vector machines are looking for a uh, uh, decision hyperplane uh, we can represent w transpose x plus b equal to 0 which lie between positive and negative samples so as uh, uh, discuss that this maximizing the margin between these two classes class 1 and minus 1 which is equivalent to the minimization of the regularization term 1 upon norm of w square i already have discussed maximizing the margin is 2 upon norm of w so here uh, it is equivalent to the minimization of r uh, uh, 1 upon 2 norm of w square so essentially the idea is we have to find out a separating hyperplane or decision hyperplane or optimal hyperplane which is represented as w transpose x plus b equal to 0 lies uh, between the bounding planes uh, uh, w transpose x plus b equal to 1 and minus 1 this is class 1 minus 1 so data point which lie on the planes or supporting hyperplanes are called support vectors so this is more clear geometrical representation of support vector machines so i have class 1 and class minus 1 data point so the data point which is above uh, the line above or on the line w dot x plus b equal to 1 uh, it represent class plus 1 and the data point which lie on uh, minus 1 uh, class minus 1 or below this this hyperplane so it called uh, data point of class minus 1 and the middle one is the optimal hyperplane so it is exactly in the middle of these two supporting hyperplane and the distance between this is 2 upon norm of w i hope it is clear so and uh, uh, i am writing here the formulation uh, this uh, uh, standard support vector machine when some misclassification there so suppose what happens if there are some misclassification in this data so we penalize with some xi xi is slack variable or error variable and we uh, put in the objective function and minimize it so same here we are uh, add in the objective function and minimize and c is the parameter so all uh, xi all error we are uh, sum uh, sum up and minimize subject to the constraint so constraint exactly as i mentioned here this is uh, the data point which lie above uh, class plus 1 so this is one hyperplane and below and on uh, minus 1 this is another hyperplane so essentially we are just club both uh, uh, hyperplanes here both data points okay so now i uh, i'll discuss a more general optimization here so uh, how to solve usually such kind of formulation usually what happens uh, the people who are working in machine learning uh, uh, so usually they are using some uh, toolboxes svm toolbox or other least square svm toolboxes and directly work on that so here uh, my emphasis uh, today is how work in support vector machine how to understand the depth of this svm and how to solve this and how to get this uh, dual formulation this is my intention uh, uh, of this talk so as i mentioned suppose i have this formulation and uh, we want to solve it right so uh, let me first discuss more general suppose i have a function uh, minimize fx subject to equality constraint gx equal to 0 so the necessary condition for x not to be a solution of this optimization problem 
such that partial order derivative with respect to x of fx plus alpha times gx it should be equal to zero at x equal to x naught. Here alpha is Lagrangian multiplier and gx equal to zero. gx is already a constraint of this optimization problem. So what happens if we have multiple constraints uh, like g1, g2 and so on. Suppose m constraints or uh, more than m constraint. What to do in that case? So uh, there is uh, essentially uh, not major change and the first uh, one uh, taking partial order derivative, uh, we had to add sum up of all the constraints now uh, with alpha. Uh, this is alpha one g one x plus alpha two g two x plus and so on. Alpha m g m x uh, equal to zero and uh, all constraints equality constraints. So now further, I'll discuss what how to solve the problem when we have uh, unconstrained minimization problem, right? Uh, or inequality constant uh, optimization problem. So uh, essentially the idea is similar. So what we do, we have, we uh, the first property is same. We take the partial order derivative with respect to X and uh, sum up all the constraints, uh, alpha one G one X plus alpha two G two X plus and so on alpha M G one X equal to zero. And we take all the constant that is g1x less than or equal to zero, g2x less than or equal to zero, and so on. So here, this function plus summation alpha i g i x is known as Lagrangian function, and uh, we simply uh, set its gradient equal to zero. That is, uh, suppose if I represent l of equal to fx plus summation alpha i g i x. So what we usually do, we take the partial order derivative of this L uh, with respect to X, with respect to alpha, beta, whatever. So, and uh, equate to zero and then solve it. For example, this one, as uh, I have given uh, this formulation, SVM primal problem, and I want to solve it, right? So let's do it. Uh, I already explained the way of solving. So with the same way, now let's do it for this problem. We take the function like called the Lagrangian function. Uh, so the objective function remains same uh, and uh, minus uh, uh, summation alpha i and whole constraints. Here alpha and beta are the Lagrangian multipliers. So we just take the uh, Lagrange uh, partial order derivative of this L with respect to W, B, alpha, beta, and all, using the KKT conditions, karish tecker conditions, and we can get, we just solve it. So I could not uh, display the whole calculations. So when you solve it and get it, so you can put again and you, you can find out it's dual in this form. So this is a simple primal and dual form. So you can, uh, 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 we can see here in this dual form, the data points that is X I transpose X I. So they appear in the form of inner product, right? So we can uh, remember this point for the nonlinear case. Uh, linear case is very simple and we can directly implement. Right, now let's go ahead for the nonlinear case. So if the training data are not linearly separable, so it means that we enhance linear separability. It means the original input space we map into high dimensional space uh, called feature space. And we can recall this optimization problem of linear case. So here data points appear in here in the form of inner product. So as long as we calculate the inner product in the feature space, we don't need to define the map explicitly. So there are many kernel functions available in the literature, right? So you, we can see, and here kernel function uh, must satisfy this um, uh, uh, Mercer theorem. Uh, here the function is positive definite. This implies that n by n, if we have n by n matrix in which ij entry kx i comma xj is always positive definite. Okay, so let's move ahead for the nonlinear case of uh, 
SVM. So uh, the only change that uh, in place of X, we are just putting phi of X. XI in place of, we are just putting phi of XI. So here phi, we know that phi is a map uh, which transform the input data into some high dimensional space, right? And uh, we simply want to solve it exactly in the same manner as I mentioned, right? So we can uh, observe from the dual formulation that the, the data points of nonlinear, this state nonlinear data appearing again in the form of inner product. That is phi x i transpose phi x i. Right. So this is uh, really a great advantage uh, of working in SVM uh, that we are uh, solving a very complex data, but uh, we are essentially working in linear input space. So some benefits and some drawbacks, uh, I just put only few here. So uh, the training is relatively easy uh, in SVM. No local optima unlike in neural network. And uh, it is scaled relatively well to high dimensional data. And uh, trade off between classifier, complexity, and error can be controlled explicitly. Uh, some drawback the first one is more general drawback. Uh, this is good kernel function. So uh, people are working on kind of assembling of kernel, and uh, people are working you now deep learning and some advanced model. So uh, choosing a kernel, yes, is another important issue. And the second in SVM is computationally high, is not as such efficient uh, algorithm. So uh, since it was developed in 1995, so after that, several algorithm by several researchers developed several algorithms. So I'll discuss today a few interesting and advanced model that is uh, highly efficient uh, than uh, this standard support vaccinations. And the third, uh, this drawback as uh, here I mentioned, SVM with hinge loss is sensitive to both label noise and feature noise. So I'll discuss few algorithm which is more robust towards noise. So one, one problem is based on pinball loss. Uh, we'll discuss uh, uh, in the last uh, of this lecture. Now, uh, I would like to uh, discuss now uh, team support vector machines. So in uh, it was developed in uh, 2007 by Jayadeva group. Uh, it is more computationally efficient model of support vector machines. It performs classification using two non-parallel hyperplanes instead of a single hyperplane as in the case of conventional SVM. So let's consider a binary classification problem to classify the data point belonging to class one and minus one, which is represented uh, by matrices uh, A uh, for class one and B for class minus one. And here L1 uh, and L2 data point belonging to class one and minus one in n-dimensional real space. So this is the formulation of support factor machine, so team support factor machine. And uh, let's uh, uh, see the difference between this formulation and uh, a standard SVM formulation, what uh, we have discussed so far. So uh, essentially what happens uh, in the team support factor machines, we look a pair of non-parallel hyperplane. Now, we see uh, in support vector machines, we uh, have a supporting hyperplane, right? Parallel hyperplanes. So in this team SVM, uh, we just put this condition flexible, right? Uh, it may not be parallel hyperplanes, right? Supporting hyperplane. It could be non-parallel, right? So the idea is proximality. The idea is coming from the proximal SVM and generalized eigenvalue proximal SVM, both the idea developed by Manga Stadium. So proximality and non-parallel conditions. So what happens in this case, 
what we see that each hyperplane is close to the data point of uh, one class and at the same time is far from the data points of other class it means that the data point which is very very close to one class and far from the other class we are considering to class 1 exactly in the same manner for the other class so if you look at uh, 2 uh, and 3 and you recall uh, the formulation of support vector machine since support vector machine what we see that we have one objective function subject to the constraint of both the classes right so here what happens we have two objective functions and two uh, constraints of each class if you see that uh, in two we are considering class uh, date a constraint of class plus 1 and in three we are considering constraint of class minus 1 right so uh, it means that we are considering that data point should be very close to class 1 and uh, far from the other class in this way uh, the proximity uh, works so and uh, uh, i'm not uh, discussing the detail to calculate or to find out the dual formulation i just put what exactly the dual formulation of tunis pm so you can see in 4 and 5 dual formulation of tunis pm so there are some issues in the dual formulation in 4 and 5 you can see that uh, the uh, inverse appears right uh, of this matrix h transpose h g transpose g so we know that um, uh, for any square matrix uh, it is not always uh, invertible any square matrix is not always invertible so uh, to do this to uh, means avoid any such uh, ill conditioning issues we add extra regularization term that is some delta uh, to this h transpose h or g transpose g to make the matrices invertible right so this is what actually we are doing manually we are adding extra regularization term 6 and 7 so this is one of the drawback and there are uh, some more drawbacks in the in this formulation it was the first approach in 27 uh, uh, 2007 and later on all these issues have been resolved by other researchers so for example this one tune bounded support vector machines it was uh, Uh, developed by Shaw Group uh, uh, in 2011. It has been published in IEEE Transactions Neural Network. So it's another variant or advanced variant. It they incorporate extra uh, uh, regularization term in the objective function. Due to that, uh, structural risk minimization principle is implemented. Right. and uh, it perform classification using two non parallel hyperplane instead of a single hyperplane in svm this is exactly the same as in svm right and uh, third tbsvm this is team bounded svm is presented as an efficient algorithm which uses the sor technique successive over relaxation for solving the optimization problem so why we are using because it it is an iterative scheme uh it takes uh, very less training time in comparison to the previous algorithm if uh, you go for svm or tnsp so you can see in 9 and 10 so uh, what is the difference he just uh, include the first uh term in 9 and 10 that is c3 by 2 uh norm of w plus whole square plus e1 b plus full square similarly in 10 the first term c4 by 2 and so on so due to this uh you can see in 11 and 12 so the formulation is more uh, theoretically advanced theoretically better you can see that the data points appear in the uh, sorry the matrices appears in the dual formulation is automatically invertible so this is h transpose h plus c3 i so uh, here c3 is some uh, parameter and i is the identity matrix okay 
so we can see here so uh, or we can say in general that uh, this formulation is more theoretically better than tnspf so we can get this for a solution in 13 and 14 we don't need to add extra regularization term manually any term so and in least square tn support factor machine this is another uh, efficient algorithm uh, in a tn svm of tn svm base so uh, we see here that uh, least square tn svm is an extremely fast and a simple algorithm that requires only solution of a system of linear equation for generating classifiers and uh, we replace the inequality constraints with equality constraints and taking the two norm of slack variable in place of one norm so these are uh, the uh, the second one and due to that our formulation is extremely fast you see here we just uh, uh, the, this is a very small change but it completely change the nature of the problem uh, you you see that uh, we can work now on the big data where uh, earlier we were not working uh, if you see the uh, numerical experiments in this paper kumar and gopal expert system with applications 29 so you can see that uh, the previous algorithm are not working well and even stop in the numerical experiment after some iterations but it works very well why because uh, in this algorithm we are simply solving two system of linear equations uh, how if you see in a team and we want to solve it so uh, how to do that we just put the value of xi of the constraint in the objective function so xi equal to e2 plus bw plus plus e2 b plus we just put it in constraint fast constraint and solve it similarly for 19 and finally we can get a solution in 20 and 21 so directly we can solve so but uh, keep uh, one thing in mind uh, which i am going to discuss in future uh, slides uh, that uh, we after all we, uh, we this is extremely fast algorithm than the previous algorithm but even though we need to calculate the inverse of the matrices right so this is a more simple that uh, when a new data point is coming so we need to check whether the new sample belong to class 1 or minus 1 we just keep this uh, class uh, uh, assignment uh, with this uh, formula uh, whether it belongs to class 1 and minus 1 belonging to the closeness whether data point is closer to this class or to other class okay now this is another uh, interesting uh, formulation so this is based on uh, least square uh, the last algorithm but we introduce uh, energy parameter and we introduce extra regularization term in the objective functions both objective function of the formulation so you can see here uh, and uh, this i uh, if you uh, just see the difference between the last algorithm and this algorithm here the major advantage uh, due to e1 and e2 capital e1 capital e2 these are energy parameters so and uh, these are flexible not fixed so it could be 0.1 0.2 and so on if it is one then uh, it is nothing but the exactly the previous algorithm if we keep c1 and c2 equal to g Uh, this C three and C four equal to zero. Sorry, yes. Mm. And we add this uh, the third term in uh, both objective function. This is the regularization term to make the matrix uh, invertible. Uh, it means that theoretically more sound and robust due to this energy parameter. So this is more uh, robust and efficient algorithm, fast algorithm. So. and uh, i'll show the advantage of this algorithm so <clears throat> later on and we can directly solve exactly in the same manner so it uh, published in applied intelligence in 2016 so uh, now uh, I, i don't know whether it is visible to most of you or not 
So uh, I had taken a screenshot of uh, one of our recent work in 2019. So it was uh, work with uh, P. N. Sugandan, my research collaborator. So uh, what happens in my uh, discussion with him in 2017 that uh, uh, how to proceed in this direction? So he just uh, means uh, share his knowledge, experience. that uh, you already have developed several tns vm based algorithm can you do this comprehensive evaluation uh, of your models with this paper so one paper is available in the literature of 2010 uh, do we need 100 classifier it was published in journal of machine learning research and according to that paper random forest is a rank 1 classifier and we have taken exactly the same setting same thing and we include eight svm tune svm uh, variants uh, in the same setup so you can see here the first rank algorithm is the re lst svm this is nothing but this is the loss algorithm this one uh, so we proposed this algorithm in 2016 so uh we lucky and uh, fortunate that uh, in the literature uh, we can say that uh, the rank 1 classifier is uh, relst svm now it has this work has been published in applied soft computing so it is based on uh, uh, more than 100 classifier more than 100 data sets around 121 data sets so now i'll proceed uh, to another algorithm uh, this is uh, large scale least square team support vector machines so this work uh, was done by my master thesis student shilpa sharma and uh, this work is recently accepted uh, in acm transactions on internet technology so uh, you see in the last uh, team svm based algorithm uh that uh, we need to compute the inverse of the matrices so due to this issue uh if we are working on uh, high dimensional or large scale data uh those algorithm are not suitable so here we propose a new approach which can overcome these issues of computing inverse matrices and uh, efficiently works well for large scale data analysis so this is a very simple algorithm so whatever i have discussed today so on the codes are publicly available in the github repository one can just uh, google github repository and my uh, this uh, username m tanvir1 so all codes are publicly available one can go uh, through those codes so this is a linear uh, least square lean, lean, linear form linear case of the our proposed algorithm least square large scale team support vector machine essentially what happens uh, in this formulation uh, the way of working the way of solving is little bit different uh, so that it can work for the large scale data you see in 1 and 2 uh, this is essentially the similar kind of algorithm uh, we have an extra this object uh, constraints so and when we are solving uh, so how to solve it we take the lagrangian function okay and uh, how to take the lagrangian function we just take the whole objective function and minus some alpha uh, or you we may put directly this value of xi and value of uh, eta 1 in the case of least square we usually do in least square sense but here we are not doing in that way we are solving differently we are solving we take the lagrangian multiplier minus alpha transpose a w 1 plus e to b 1 minus xi 1 eta 1 similarly for minus beta transpose of second transpose so this uh, you can see here in uh, lagrangian function we do in this way 
So what happens, we just take the partial order derivative with respect to W1, B1, eta1, xi1, alpha, beta, and all. Okay, and uh, we solve it, and finally we put there, and we got this solution W1, B1. So W1, B1, and W2, B2, what we see here in W1, B1, we are getting some matrices, and this uh, matrices we see here that there is no issue of calculation of the inverse of any matrix. So these are, we can, whatever be the large scale data, we can directly solve efficiently. So you see that this is a dual formulation and here Q cap is the matrix and the matrix appear this Q cap equal to this. And you can see that uh, invertibility issues automatically resolved here. No need to take the inverse of the matrices. No need to solve and no need to take the inverse. No need to calculate the inverse of the matrices uh, in MATLAB or in any, uh, wherever you are working. So now uh, this is uh, our uh, contribution, uh, recent contribution that uh, this such algorithm can work very well for large scale data analysis. Similarly for another formulation, we see it in the same way. So one can see that dual formulation of the proposed approach solves an unconstrained optimization problem and doesn't need to compute inverse matrices. <clears throat> so, and we can just uh, take the decision of this function <clears throat> in the similar manner, uh, closeness uh, belonging to class one or minus one. So there are uh, several ways to solve the problem. So this problem we solve using uh, SMO, uh, uh, sequential minimal optimization, uh, because it's a least square formulation, so, and uh, iterative method for uh, getting the solutions. <clears throat> so we use SMO algorithm for the problem of the type 13, where Q is positive definite symmetric matrix, and C is a parameter, and here V is a vector and X is a variable. So we simply use this paper, IJCNN of QT et al, uh, of uh, 2003 paper. So this is an algorithm, <clears throat> and uh, this is nonlinear formulation of the same formulation. <clears throat> so you see here in the primal formulation uh, for the nonlinear case, we just directly, uh, if you remember the previous algorithm for tuneness VM, so we are not directly writing this phi A and phi B. Uh, here, uh, this is uh, another way of solving uh, for the large scale data. We directly working for the nonlinear case. It means that the previous uh, was the kernel generated surface, but these are the directly kernel we are adding. A nonlinear uh, function we are adding. So, and we can see uh, that uh, this is exactly uh, uh, this Q cap. You can see the matrices here appearing. Uh, is, uh, now we can see that uh, uh, invertibility issues are resolved, removed from here. And uh, for another uh, formulation, we can see exactly in the same manner. Okay. And we can calculate the decision function in 18 and 19. And uh, in the same manner as previous we discussed, we can calculate, uh, we can classify uh, about the closeness of the data point. When a new data point is coming up, how to decide. So you, using this function, we are deciding. And uh, now we also prove the convergence, whether uh, the function, uh, whatever we are considering, is yes, converges or not. So this is we simply solve it. So more details one can just see uh, the paper is already published. Um, so now I'll discuss uh, some results of uh, this formulation. So these are small small data sets, right? Uh, so uh, it will not make a much impact because uh, we develop model for the large scale data. So these are just uh, for showing purpose, we have shown that our data, our uh, algorithm works well for the uh, small data also, like this. So this is also not big data, but
but uh, you can see that our data point is uh, our proposed algorithm of the large scale data is working fine for the small data size uh, for non linear case also we have shown uh, these uh, algorithm uh, and uh, now uh, advantages you can see here on the large scale data sets so you can see when uh, the date in the first column when the size of the data becomes large you can see that the existing algorithm are tbs vm tws vm rls tws vm and our purpose is the last column right so you can see when the data size becomes large 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 so then the uh, baseline algorithm failed to work but the purpose model is working fine so uh, here we can conclude that the purpose model is working uh, on the large scale data few more example you can see here when uh, in the first column data size is given uh, 100k means uh, 100000 right means uh, yeah 100000 size samples so we see that when on the last column is the purpose algorithm and uh, the uh, before this three columns are baseline algorithm you can see that all the algorithms failed after some uh, iterations so means when the size uh, increase of the data so uh, the baseline algorithm failed but our purpose algorithm which develop for the large scale data is working fine so uh, we can see this parameter effects yeah so this is also a uh, major issues in machine learning in general so that uh, uh, when you slightly change the parameters so the uh, accuracy may have a major effect sometimes so it means that we have to be very very careful to choose the parameters so normally we use the tenfold close validation we take the range of the parameters and take the tenfold close validation tenfold means we just uh, Uh, partition in ten parts and uh, take uh, one by one, and then finally take the average. So and so that to have the more robustness uh, uh, on the accuracy of the proposed model. Similarly, this one. So it means that uh, this algorithm, the proposed one, doesn't need to complete the inverse of the matrices. This is we have seen. and the dual formulation is an unconstrained optimization problem which can be efficiently solved using smo technique and smo technique is fast and efficient method which gives better results with with less time complex now this is uh, the last formulation of my talk as uh, i mentioned that i'll discuss uh, uh, some algorithm uh, to overcome the issue of noise to overcome the issue of the uh, high complexity right so this is the issue that we resolve the issue of the noise right so uh, what happens uh, uh, in uh, team support vector machine algorithms so uh, we introduce this pinball loss functions to have a major uh, impact uh, which is more robust towards noise so you can see here in 4 and 5 so and compare with the original tune svm formulations so if you see here tau 1 and tau 2 if we just put it close to zero okay it tending to zero then the second constant of 4 and 5 it goes towards xi1 and xi2 greater than or equal to zero it means that uh, Uh, if tau one and tau two approaches to zero, then these four and five are reduced to the original TNSVM formulation. So it means that uh, TNSVM is just a, a special case of this formulation, right? Uh, this work was uh, accepted, published in 2019, Information Sciences, where uh, it was developed by also MSc student uh, Anshul Sharma. so and with uh, my collaborator pn sugandhan from ndu singapore so and we see that w, uh, we solve this w plus b plus uh, uh, and finally we take the distribution functions we also develop this advanced version 
uh, as sparseness. So uh, essentially, this model is not sparse. We also introduce sparse uh, loss functions, sparse pinball loss functions. Uh, and uh, we also seen that uh, the model is uh, sparse, robust due to pinball loss. Uh, so it was published in Applied Soft Computing in 2019. And uh, it was developed by uh, our student uh, Rahul and uh, this Sanchit Jalan. Both are BTEC uh, uh, second year, third year student at the time. So, and this paper received best uh, award in IIT Indore. <clears throat> so you can see that the pinball loss in SVM, statistically we see, we have seen that average rank is better. Uh, average rank means uh, if it is one, so top rank, if it is five, uh, low rank, if we are talking about five algorithm. Right here we have two, four, six algorithm. It means that if the rank is six, it means worst. And if it is one, it's top. So we see that average rank is uh, minimum uh, for our proposed algorithm. It means that the proposed algorithm is more more efficient than the baseline algorithm. OK, so far my uh, technical uh, part uh, almost over. So one can ask questions, whatever is in, in your mind. So now I'll continue to uh, discuss a uh, few ongoing research activities uh, in my uh, research lab. So uh, you can see that uh, this some projects are going on. Uh, you can see this, the first one is classification and prediction of Alzheimer's disease using multimodal imaging data. So let me just uh, uh, note here, whatever algorithm we have discussed so far, and whatever we are doing uh, these days in our research lab, we usually uh, implement our model on the biomedical data, most of the algorithm. And uh, for the case of biomedical data, we usually prefer to take the human brain disorder disease. So for the human brain disorder disease, we usually prefer Alzheimer data. Alzheimer data is publicly available, ADNI and uh, epilepsy data for uh, epileptic disease. So uh, these are also publicly available. So we usually prefer uh, these two data sets in most of our paper, in addition to face recognition, uh, detections, and several other applications. So we usually prefer to consider biomedical data. So you can also see the same thing in our ongoing uh, research projects. The first uh, project is based on uh, classification and prediction of Alzheimer disease using multimodal imaging data. So essentially the objective of this uh, uh, problem is to develop a novel machine learning approach uh, uh, to develop, uh, develop a model so that can tell us, that can classify the patients of Alzheimer at the earliest stage, right? So, and the second problem is more simpler uh, optimization models and algorithms for non-parallel SVM. So I have discussed several algorithms based on non-parallel SVM, that is tune SVM based. So uh, this is more general, uh, we can develop a novel model. And the third is more specific to human brain disorder disease. So we need to develop novel machine learning approach for human brain disorder disease. It could be epilepsy, it could be Alzheimer, it could be uh, sleep disorders or like this. And uh, now this fourth uh, problem is based on uh, uh, automated detection of seizure using EEG signals. So the focus is using EEG signals. So here we are focusing, we are developing machine learning algorithms using EG signals. We already have one uh, uh, wireless EG recording systems. So that can uh, detect uh, EG signals automatically from the distance mode. And then we do the pre-processing and then uh, uh, we use some machine learning algorithm to classify and uh, uh, just uh, take the decision. <clears throat> 
and the fifth is uh, really different from uh, the last uh, this four projects com completely different uh, it's based on forensic uh, uh, knowledge integration intelligence so this is a spark project so if any of you are interested to such kind of uh, uh, research so you are welcome to collaborate and you are welcome uh, to work with me either in some project positions or kind of uh, joint work or whatever uh, this is uh, you uh, you are i'll be happy to uh, see uh, your response after the talk uh, you can directly uh, write to me on my email <clears throat> Uh, I would like to acknowledge uh, research grants funded and supporting by First IT Indoor, where I am working on, and uh, Spark Project, uh, SCRB, CSIR, DST, NTU Singapore, Rolls Royce, uh, and DST, uh, this ICPS, and uh, many more. Uh, I would like to invite uh, uh, to all of you. Uh, to submit your uh, high quality work in these two top class uh, journal uh, one is applied soft computing elsewhere uh, in back factor 5.47 and uh, the deadline is uh, 30 september <clears throat> and uh, the second one is annals of operations research uh, it is also uh, very good uh, journal so you are welcome deadline is still there 30 september and another one is 31st december so <clears throat> if you are working in the theme of these special issues so and uh, i would like to invite you to join uh, misp 2020 this is international conference on machine intelligence and signal processing uh, it is going to held in uh, Sri Lanka. I am one of the journal chairs of this conference. So you are welcome to submit your uh, work in this conference. So essentially, uh, let me give you the background. Uh, I, uh, I was the founding uh, uh, journal chair of this conference, MISP in 2017. And the second event happened in 2019. Uh, 2019 in uh, IIIT Allahabad and 2021 it is in Sri Lanka. Now uh, the last one I would like to invite you to uh, IEEE CIS Summer School. It is one of the most prestigious uh, summer school. Usually happened once in a year in any place of India. So this time we got we approved uh, we got the approval from ieee cis with full funded uh, so you are welcome tentatively we are planning to organize this uh, summer school in november 2020 so these are some of the references i used uh, in this slide and uh, now thank you so much uh, for your kind attention so now uh, you are welcome to ask any question. Uh, sir, there are one or two questions. Hmm. Can we detect COVID-19 using SVM instead of going uh, for deep learning? Yeah, because what happens uh, as uh, I mentioned, yes, uh, we can go ahead if you are using the algorithm which works for the largest scale data. Because the COVID data is very large now. If you are working on the worldwide data, not uh, a particular state or particular country data. If you are working the whole COVID data, so data in general is very large. So to do that, you can work in uh, our last algorithm, which is called large scale least square tune support back machines. So it may work. Uh, I, I hope that it should work for the uh, classification of COVID data. Means uh, you can classify whether a uh, person is COVID positive or uh, normal. 
Uh, your voice is mute. Okay. Any other question, uh, Dr. Tripti? Uh, so one more question. Uh, can we detect any disease at the early stage using SVM? Yeah, there are many uh, literature available where people are developing uh, SVM uh, or advanced SVM model uh, to detect the disease at the earliest stage, especially SV, this Alzheimer's disease, epilepsy, Several literatures are available. Just go through the Google Scholar and just type uh, early diagnosis of uh, Alzheimer, early diagnosis of epilepsy using uh, SVM or least square SVM or other algorithms. So, and we also developed some uh, uh, SVM based algorithm in the recent. So please go through those papers. It's available, publicly available. And quotes are also available. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. That's all with the queries asked by the participants. So thank you, sir. And thank you, participants. So we hope you will connect and join in future us. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for listening to uh, my talk. Thank you so much, Dr. Tripti, uh, again, for uh, inviting me uh, in this webinar. <clears throat> thank you, sir. Uh, sir, yeah, please. Uh, please. Sir, so, uh, now we have time of 10 minutes or uh, six minutes, so okay. you, can uh, you can join at four o'clock for valedictory ceremony. Okay, perfect, perfect. So, okay, I'll join from my another office. I'm leaving from here. Okay, okay. I hope, yeah, yeah, okay, okay, thank you. Mm. So, after six minutes, we will join again for valedictory ceremony. After 15 minutes, uh, this is now 3 45. 3.45. Okay, huh? yeah. After 15 minutes. Yes, yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you, sir. So it's going streaming? Yeah, yeah it's streaming. Okay. Yes, it's up camera.
Good evening, sir. Good evening. Director Sun will join within uh, five minutes. He said just now. Okay, he was okay. in another meeting. He was in another meeting. So the meeting is already over and he will join maybe within okay. five minutes. Okay, sir. We will wait for five minutes, then we will start. Director Sun will join after five minutes. Hmm. Just a few minutes, very fast. Some technical is to share the Where is the mixer? This one, Copy. Hmm. But uh, someone did not receive the money. So she has just coming. Come down. Check the details. Are the details are right or not? But why is it still in? Yeah. It is a box. No, it will not work. You just go for a preview, then it will change. Let me click preview. It's working. So should I share it again? Sir. Ah. Sorry, 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 sorry. Mati, sorry, mati, sorry. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Ama. In the Marty, the Marty, the text to email address Marty. Ah. Marty, the Marty, the Marty. Email ID, uh, it is coming period also, August, perfect. For fourth August. Morgan, sir. Hello, sir. Morgan. Good evening, sir. Hello, Morgan. Hello, sir. Uh, am I audible, Morgan? Yes, sir. You are absolutely audible, sir. No, 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 no. What a horse is it? Headphones, sir. Sir, uh, sir you are, yes, sir. You are audible. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, sir. Mm.
Rogan sir, you can call to director also. Director sir also. Uh, sir, I am calling to director, sir. I am calling to that GST HOD. Hello, hello. hello. Yes, sir. You are audible. Yes, sir. Yes, yes. I, I have joined. Yes. Yes. Good evening, sir. Uh, good evening. So, good evening, so, sir. Uh, at the valedictory, how many people? Uh, yes, sir. Already you are here. Padi, sir, here. Our HOD, GST HOD here. Uh, Our uh, EC faculty also here. Uh, we are waiting for that uh, uh, Dr. Tanvir from IIT Indo. He is just going to join, sir. Okay. Very good. Yeah. Thank you, sir. So, so how many were the number of participants? in e each of the lectures on an average sir in average around 500 participants acha yes sir so so the question that comes now where have all the flowers gone so are they on the youtube or uh, they have not joined here or say so, so much they have studied during this five day period yes sir <laughs> yes sir they are joined through youtube so Actually, uh, 1,880 participants they have registered. Yeah. In, yeah. in every session, average of 500 participants they have attended through YouTube. Now, okay. That is fine because yes. not that every, each and every person will be interested to attend each and every talk. Yes, so sir. everyone will be attending to the topic which they like. Yes, so sir. about 1880 is basically the union of all these participants. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. So 500 yes. is a good number. But I was looking for some more people to join here. Huh? <laughs> yes, ah, okay. That yes. is not in your hand. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and uh, 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 no participant here. Huh? Yes, sir. Participant there, uh, uh, like attending through the YouTube channel only, sir. Achha. Okay. So you have some recorded feedback from the participants? Uh, that is, how yes, sir. Like the course, whether it uh, was good or it was bad or it was okay. Yes, sir. We have every session we are collecting the feedback session through okay. the Google Forms. Okay. And also we are collecting the program feedback form according to the TechUp3 format. Okay. So everything is in online. So we'll share you, sir. Now, okay. That is fine. 
Yes. Uh, but I, I was expecting in, in this validated program, some participants okay. will be, say, grabbed in and they will be asked to say good things about the program. But okay, uh, I am looking for some people here. Yes, sir. I am just trying to connect some participants, sir. Please give me some time. I think it is possible. Just in the YouTube, we just mentioned if yeah, anyone right. is interested with their comments. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Share the link. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. I am just sending. Yes, share sir. this Google Meet link in the YouTube and yes, let sir. them join. Yes, sir. I am just I sending. Think, yes, sir. I think that will make the thing more lively. Otherwise, yes. in the valedictory, uh -huh. say, there is no point in repeating the old things which is say again and again. Uh -huh. Our uh, uh, meeting link uh, you share into the YouTube, like participant can join through the Google Meet. Share the Google Meet. The, and just uh, inform that the, you can share your opinion about the workshop. Yes, sir. Sure. By joining the Google Meet link. Yes, sir. And post the link again. Uh, Murgan, sir. So I have just shared yes, the sir. link. Sir, this uh, Google Meet link is not static. Uh, you need to share a static link. Yeah. Sir, I said Amanda Meet, just take it. Meeting is working. Maybe they are outside of an ID, so they can't join. Uh, given permission, I think some will join. Given permission other than NIT, I'm just sending the people. I'm not trying. Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. Now the participants are joining.
sir director sir sir yeah. yes sir i think now now we can start yes sir i have enough number of parties we have enough number of participants also joined sir ha uh, ha ha and enough number of participants on the virtual uh, youtube channel yes sir. yeah okay. yes, sir. no issue yes sir thank you sir ah uh. madam tanvir sir join tanvir i send the mail Yes, he called me also. I think some problem will be there. It's a new test, right? Yes. You also have. Okay, ma'am. You just connect to sir. I will start. Okay. A very good evening to all the dignitaries and the participants. I am Dr. R. Murugan, hosting this valedictory ceremony of MIFI 2020. On behalf of the entire organizing committee of Electronics and Communication Engineering Department, National Institute of Technology, Chilchir, and Electronics and Communication Engineering Department, Guwahati University Institute of Science and Technology, Guwahati. I welcome you all for the valedictory ceremony of the one week webinar on machine intelligence in biomedical and health informatics 2020 to begin the valedictory ceremony with a formal welcome address I welcome our honorable director of NIT Silchar professor Shivaji Bandhubhai sir and I welcome the respected head of the department of electronics and communication engineering NIT Silchar Dr. K. L. Bhaisnav sir, I welcome respected Dr. Sukumar Padi sir, the coordinator, Equip Three, and Nati Chil sir. I welcome H O D E C E G U I S T, Dr. Professor K. K. Sharma sir. I welcome all the coordinator, faculty member of both Nati Chil sir as well as G U I S T Guwahati and dear participants. With this welcome address, I move on to the webinar report on MIFI 2020. In this one-week webinar, MIFI 2020, there are nine resource person who have shared their research ideas and experiences. On day one, session one, Dr. Ellen Sharma, IIT Guwahati, has delivered origin of some psychological signals and applications of artificial intelligence. Dr. Ellen Sharma is the active researcher. in the field of biomedical imaging he belongs to electro medical and speech technology laboratory department of electronics and electrical engineering indian institute of technology guwahati on day 1 session 2 engineer suraj dalwar computer vision engineer continental automotive bengaluru has delivered a talk on application of computer vision for covid 19 problems Engineer Suraj Dalwar is currently working as an automatic driverless car assistance system project in Continental Automotive. It is the third largest competitor in developing automatic driverless car assistance system after Tesla and Google cars. He delivered many research issue related to computer vision. On day two, session three, Dr. Praful P. Pai, Mathurs, New Delhi, has delivered a talk. applying deep learning to medical images and signals on day 2 session 4 engineer mohammad ilyas ceo on sense chennai has delivered a talk on machine intelligence and computer vision using python on day 3 session 5 myself dr r murugan has delivered a talk on detection and segmentation of retinal anatomical structure and features through fundus images On day three, session six, engineer Navin Sharma, scientist, CSIO, CSIR lab, Chandigarh, has delivered a talk on role of biomedical imaging in human psychology. On day four, seventh session, Dr. Kriti Goyal has delivered a talk on application of machine learning and deep learning in the field of medical imaging. On day four, session eight, uh, Dr. Anjan Talukta, GUIST, he has delivered. the applications of computer vision in hand gesture recognition system on day 5 session 9 dr praful p poi again he delivered a talk on 
applying machine learning to engineering and sciences on day 5 session 10 today second of session dr mohammed danvi iit indo has delivered a talk on large scale least square twin svm in the last session so he belongs to is dr mohammed danvi is an active researcher in the area of machine learning and deep learning he belongs to the optimization for machine learning research group iit indore there are 1880 participants are registered and participated in this webinar which includes iits nits central university state universities private universities medical colleges which includes aims kilpak medical college chennai etc and many self financing institute throughout the country i thank you all the participants for their active participation i hope these five days webinar have been beneficial to all the participant to sign their careers with this with this webinar report i request dr k l vaisnav hod ece nit silchar to deliver the address of gathering please sir <coughs> Uh, very good afternoon uh, to all our honorable directors sir uh, other dignitaries uh, like the hod of uh, gua electronics and communication engineering of gua guist uh, dr shukumar poti uh, that uh, rt cube coordinator of nrd silchers uh, others uh, experts over uh, there in the uh, interactions uh, i am very happy uh the we are the really our department is going on uh, already uh, i think as uh, a second uh, workshop or uh, or fdp that we are going to have we have a number of number of uh, programs uh, that's called uh, in the department uh, on the pipelines so everybody in the departments so every faculty is really they are actively involved in the uh, research and they are uh, disseminating their knowledge and and giving a a uh, wonderful confluence of all the researcher in the particular domain and uh, bringing all those uh, the new generations uh, the participant most of the participant i see that they are really uh, the students uh, young students so the great opportunity for them because they are the next uh, filler of our country uh, so uh, giving the good input to them i hope so that they can really uh, widen their ambitions Uh, the career and ultimately the growth will come to the nations and as i said that this programs yesterday today also our directors are already uh, circulated one notice that cyber security and cyber physical systems iit archival iit 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 indore has started uh, so uh, inviting all uh, that uh, project from the uh, the uh, faculties so many faculties involved were there and you know that cyber physical system in the next generations are uh, hope so that really uh, that that part also is uh, very very important because uh, medical uh, such a things that every uh, is a huge huge uh, requirement in the market because people want online uh, medicine people want online uh, diagnosis uh, in terms of the instrument in terms of the uh, the technology a uh, very very uh, for the essence uh, better more the medical uh, medical science and technology as you know that Without without medical technology, hmm. doctor cannot do. Nowadays, you see that before going to any sort of a doctor, they do a lot of uh, uh, that uh, uh, what is called analysis or testing because the testing equipments are very very essential for us. And that machine learning really helps a great all sort of uh, uh, to simplify or uh, to to diagnosis uh, the particular disease. And in a shorter time, and that's why we need different, different uh, schemes, different algorithms, so that we can have um, a better um, uh, diagnosis in the different uh, uh, size or different uh, resolution level, that uh, micro, mini levels. So that's why you need the technology. As 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 I'm very really happy that uh, we see that 500 uh, participants in this uh, workshop really is a great, great. Achievements, and you can see that there are young, 
So we young really staff is over there. I hope so that all are benefited. And uh, coming to the, the department, I was under, under the uh, our honorable directors, sir, motivated faculty, different projects, uh, different collaboration with the different universities. Our, our, our honorable directors are it is, uh, still sir, is involved in the research. Really, that really gives another touch, really another touch that really why we not uh, why not we, we involved in the research. So uh, uh, really, that's um, uh, we are all motivated under the under the leadership of our honorable directors, sir. Uh, the institute already uh, back five double international projects. So faculty not only involved, not only remain within the country projects, they are even, um, writing uh, several projects with different uh, countries. Right now, uh, Japan also has opened one uh, collaborative projects. Faculty also writing uh, project with the with the with the Japan. Hope so that uh, all the faculties really uh, they are uh, looking into the different opportunity uh, comes uh, from the ministry side so that they, they can capture those opportunities. And uh, thank you, finally, really, I hope so that uh, all of benefited and I hope so this workshop will also lead a uh, good collaborations with the experts because nine experts have delivered the talks as, as uh, Dr. Murgon said, uh, that that's uh, starting the collaborative work. We can have a joint projects, uh, we can have a lo long run um, uh, collaborations. With this, I hope so, I, I congratulate uh, the uh, this uh, workshop uh, convener coordinators and obviously the energy group uh, uh, coordinators taking the pain and obviously our and our directors are motivating all all the faculty really to come off with a new pace uh, schemes so that we can have a more collaboration with the outside uh, the NIT teachers with this really i thank you all i hope so that all these five um, days really all the participants enjoy the sessions uh, thank you all. Thank you all. And namaste, please. Namaste. Thank you very much, sir, for your encouraging words. We are looking, we are uh, looking forward to collaborate with everyone in future. Thank you very much. I request uh, the HOD of GUIST, Guwahati, Professor K. K. Sarma, sir, to deliver this gathering. Please, sir. Sarma, sir? Yeah. Uh, hello, hello. Uh, um, uh, yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. You are audio. Uh, yes, yes. So, uh, 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 thank you to you all. Uh, respected uh, director, sir. Uh, respected. Uh, 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 and the coordinators and all the, all the uh, participants. Uh, we heard from the report that there there was a significant number of uh, participants who uh, who took part in this seven day uh, or, or uh, five day long program and all all uh, participants i hope uh, were were benefited since there there was a diverse range of topics uh, covered and most of the topics are quite relevant uh, and and since this sort of this sort of uh, program for which the sharing of know-how of the resource persons and the participants, uh, new uh, new directions of research shall be taken up by the participants. Subsequently, we will we will continue to work together as as part of the uh, uh, take it three uh, twinning program, uh, since this is quite uh, quite uh, beneficial for us. The, the the team of the the team led by the two uh, two uh, <coughs> coordinators are quite mm, uh, uh, quite uh, proficient in uh, doing the things well managing the resources uh, though though there are constraints and uh, and uh, limitations i 
I found that the five days went off smoothly with no uh, uh, problem at all. All the all the uh,
thank you sir a very good afternoon to respected director sir tech up coordinator hod department of electronics and communication nit silchar hod guwahati university institute of science and technology guwahati expert speakers faculty members of nit silchar and guwahati university institute of science and technology and dear participants i on behalf of uh, of electronics and communication department of nit silchar take this opportunity to propose vote of thanks to those who are directly and indirectly contributed to the one week webinar on machine intelligence in biomedical and health informatics conducted by department of electronics and communication and it is silchar in collaboration with guwahati university institute of science and technology guwahati first of all i would like to thank our honorable director sir professor shivaji bandopadhyay sir for giving us his precious time from his busy Come. schedule and accepting to the chief guest for the today valedictory ceremony so you have Nein. been a constant enthusiastic Nein. support Nein. and you have given Nein. Nein. us encouragement with your words Nein. and presence we are always enlightened Nein. with Nein. your knowledge and presence i will always remain grateful to you i would Nein. like Nein. to express Nein. our profound thanks to our hod of electronics Nein. and communication department Dr. K. L. Vaishnu for his moral support and guidance. I would like to express my gratitude to Dr. Sukumar Pati, Tech Up Coordinator, and I T Silchar, to give us an opportunity to organize this webinar and for your guidance and continuous support. I would like to acknowledge our gratitude to the today guest speaker, Dr. M. Kanvi from IIT Indore, and all the expert speakers who share his precious knowledge and experience. to make this workshop interesting and meaningful i must now express my special thanks to dr naresh babu sir and his team for contributing technically for organizing this webinar as no workshop can be successful with a single person so i express my big thanks to the advisory committee and the organizing committee for their support in organizing this webinar finally i thank to all the wonderful participants for showing their interest in our webinar Thank you so much for your cooperation. Once again, I thank you all for your cordial cooperation. Now, I request to everyone, please stand for the national anthem. मैम आवाज नहीं आ रही थी थैंक यू ऑल द गेस्ट एंड पार्टिसिपेंट्स वी होप यू विल कनेक्ट एंड ज्वाइन इन फ्यूचर जय हिंद थैंक यू थैंक यू सर जय हिंद मैम गुड इवनिंग Thank you, ma'am. Good day, ma'am. Good day. Then, sir, attendance link. Attendance link I share. What was some mistake? They are saying some. Actually, ma'am, this one na you are not sharing actually. So, what happened? Ma'am, this will be disconnect. 
Okay, so what you have to do, you have to click here that it is in live now. If you just click again now, it will stop. So you have to always look in the screen whether it is enabled or not. Sometimes it is auto disabled. Mm -hmm. Sir, please mute the uh, audio, sir. Thank you. 